JC, hurry up. That's it's time right. for our movie review. Always have trouble getting the real good reviewing on. <sighs> well, yes, you may know it is, folks. It is day. It is our first daytime movie review. Yay! 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 Very exciting. Very exciting. Indeed. Yes. So what movie are we reviewing? We are today? reviewing the B-movie Star Crash. Star Crash. That's yes. 1978. Yep, it's a beam movie. Fiction thriller. Thriller, yay! That is very bad marketing. So a little plot summary. Go ahead. Basically, it all starts in the middle of what's that sound? Oh, nothing. It it all starts in the middle of space, where we see two smugglers smuggling something. When police come and try to capture them. They then promptly warp into hyperspace, which um, is a bunch of, it's, it's basically a 10 second light show. Weird colors, you know. Yeah, but you forget the very beginning of the movie when there was an- Oh yes, I, I'm sorry, I forgot. Basically, before that, after the beginning credits, we see a ship in the middle of space when a red light of doom appears, and they all fall over, and um, everybody on the ship dies. So they go through yeah. hyperspace, you know, Not an explanation why is this red light of doom dangerous, we don't know. We don't know. But we do know that these smugglers run into that ship, or at least want to escape. Yes, they try to escape, and they run into the ship, where they discover everybody except one person has died of horrible death. Now, what I find interesting about this is this is the first flaw. It's very fake. Okay, this is a B-movie, so I understand that. But they go inside, and they get inside, and they take the spacesuits off. And the reason that's a flaw? Um, wasn't that ship broken? Yeah, no air, no atmosphere. Yeah, so unless you suddenly fixed it, um, do they have the ability to not breathe? And I think one I of the mean, actors, everybody has that, but then they tend to die when they do not breathe. I think I noticed that one of the actors is wearing Nikes. Really? Yeah, Nike shoes. Wow, well, product placement. Yeah, product placement. Way in the future, they have Nikes, I guess. Yeah, it's Nikes. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, we find this uh, survivor, bring them back on the ship. He's just, he's comatose pretty much, just mumbling about a monster. And then, what do you know, the police, who apparently also have hype, that hyperspace engine thingy, come along and capture them. But they don't really want to capture them. They want to recruit them. Yes, you want to recruit smugglers. Yeah. Because, because uh, of the evil emperor. Yes. Zara Karn, is that right? Or something of that sort. Has created a super weapon, and apparently that ship was, that first ship that got disabled, was out to destroy... Zarth Arms. Super, Super weapon. weapon! But now they need... It's not a rebellion. That was right. Star. And basically the boy and the guy, who for some reason are apparently the best pilot and the best navigator. Now, I have a question. And, is the, best, and the best dressed. I guess. All those more than I have opinion. So I have a quick <laughs> question. If they're the best navigators and best pilots, why do they work as smugglers? Can't they get other jobs? I mean... You know, why would they even want to save the galaxy? I didn't, I didn't mean saving the galaxy. I meant more illegal, maybe better paying jobs. That's true, but maybe not. Who knows? Maybe the economy isn't so good in the future. Okay. So we cut to the Emperor, who whose fortress is, I'm not even kidding you, a clawed hand. He wears a red robe and has a goatee. This guy screams evil. <laughs> Were they? You might as well put a big sign over his head that says, I am evil, fear me. I kick puppies off cliffs for le in my leisure time. That's right. But, yeah. they, do, but they do manage to, uh, to get away. Yeah. And? Well, they go into space and try to find the ship. And lo and behold, they're captured. But they're not only trying to find the ship, they're also trying to find the Emperor's 
son right. who was on one of the ships. There are multiple ships, right. and he was on one of them. So this is actually a more complicated story than at first. Yes. It first appears. So anyway, they also have with them two companions. One guy who is blue skinned, and we have absolutely no idea who he is really. And a robot who talks with a very cowboyish accent. And, and who can also read minds, apparently. Yeah. And he can also do other things. Yes. He's quite superhuman. Mm -hmm. In addition to being from Texas. <laughs> Which yeah. I, I found quite ironic. Yeah. Basically, they get captured, I think. They get captured. And they have, and they're sent to work in a mine. Or, well, a power thing on another planet. And then Stella Star says, We're not slaves! Let's be free! Yeah. And then some slaves got weapons and are instantly <laughs> 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 and Let so. me Let me explain how it looks. It looks like, imagine this is the floor. It's a rocky floor. And then there are stairs going up this way and up this way where they have to take this little ball energy thing and dump it in a reactor thing. Now there are some guards everywhere and there are actually more prisoners than guards. Already a bad sign, Mr. Evil Emperor. And, um, apparently the weapons the guards use, if, if purposefully or accidentally shot at the reactor thing, will cause it to explode. And that is eventually what happens to the whole compound, right? Yes, nearly everybody dies except the girl. Now, this is ridiculous. I mean, honestly, you... The team in that, there is no, what is it again? There is no safety regulations here. I mean, there's so many things wrong. You should have more guards than there are prisoners. You should make sure you can't accidentally destroy the reactor. You should make sure there's no way for them to get weapons. You should... It's and she gets thing. out. Nearly all the prisoners die, and the place blows to smithereens. How she gets out before it blows to smithereens, I don't know. She just apparently does. So what's uh, what's up with the giant robot that shows up? Well, they eventually they go to another planet where apparently the evil emperor stations some Amazon guards. Yes. We're oh. there chased by a giant robot, and they attempt to escape. Hmm. It is very steep. It is very fakeish. Just, just fakeish. That's, that's how it is in this movie. Everything looks great. Who are also dressed very well. Yeah. And then when they get away from them, a giant silver Amazon woman robot, who at first you think, oh my gosh, it's going to be the terror of the planet, turns out. <laughs> Can hardly move. It's yeah, very slow. And, and uses a giant knife. Just a giant knife. It's very inconvenient. And do they have lasers bigger than a hand laser? Because they might need some. So. And she apparently has like places in her body to shoot lasers, like in her head and <laughs> in other locations, but yeah. she never seems to use those lasers. So anyway, they get off there, and then I believe they go to an icy planet. Mm -hmm. Reminds me of Planet Hawk. Mm hmm So when they Star Wars should shoot the script too, this movie. Mm hmm <laughs> Okay, so we got two minutes before we're done here, son. So we better. Okay, okay. They go to the icy planet. The robot saves their skin. And um, then they go to another planet where some there's some tribal natives. The robot the robot is destroyed by them, and the girl is captured. Whereupon a monster thingy appears and saves her skin by shooting lasers. Well, at the natives, and then it turns out it's the captain's son. Ah, so really, good. movie you use a lot of those Duet X machine machines. And then um. What I found interesting is, at this point, she seems to become a bit of a friend of the robot. And she doesn't care about his death. I mean, I understand they need to get away, but after they're safe, they never ask, what happened to the robot? What happened to the robot? We need to go save him. They just go, eh, yeah. don't care. <laughs> oh, and lo and behold, 
Yes, and um, so they take the sun and learn, and they go down to the bottom of the planet, where they learn that apparently the red monster thing is a bunch of machines that cause fear and insanity. Yeah. Why the guy who was on there, who had found it, never decided, hmm, maybe I should ax it, or pro rock set it, or turn it off, is never explained or discussed, or even brought up in the slightest. Bad movie! Bad, 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 bad movie! That makes no logical sense! Alright, we need a final re uh, rating of Okay, this. basically they get out, they, they stop the bad guys, in a ridiculous <laughs> fight that goes on way too long. And everybody lives happily ever after. Oh, but the, well, yeah, the, 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 the other smuggler dies. Oh, the smuggler. <laughs> so oh, yes, and it turns out apparently he can feed a future, but because of some laws, he can't change anything. Really? So, really, what, what, what rating to. would you give this movie? Three or four out of ten. Three or four out of ten. Bad movie, you bad, 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 well, bad movie. Well, although the, the CGI gra graphics were, were absolutely awful, and the, the plot was... <laughs> they look fake. There's so many plot holes. Like, there's the pl no, the like, plot yeah, was there's terrible. No, there's no angst. There's no... Sadness. The characters are just infinitely cheery. The the like, plot. Oh the, my the character character development inside. was awful. The, the there was no character development. The acting was was atrocious. <laughs> yes, but I, I'm still gonna have to give this movie a ten out of ten. He used a lot of UX X machine mods to get them out of really tight spots, so they can't explain it. Just then, oh, never mind. There's a giant laser that. Stops the planet from blow, blowing up. If you stop talking for a second, I can finish my reading. There we go. So it's uh, I'm gonna give it a ten out of ten because I think that the the outfits outweigh everything else by far. So what do you think of that rating I, I just gave? I still give it a three out of ten. What is that noise? I don't know. Start check. <laughs> I think we have a new guest here. Right. Oh, we're introducing who? Hello. It appears we have a duck. Who is it? Oh, hello. I think I met him at Star Camp. Hi, Duck. What's your name? I'm surprised you're taking this so well. Who, me? Yes. That's ridiculous having a duck in our movie review. I think you just insulted it. It's ridiculous that this duck would be insulted. I'm sorry. It would like me to get its luggage. Okay. Well, we're going to have to sign off. This is way yes. too long. Goodbye. Quack, quack. Yes, I know. Yes, I said that for you. Goodbye.